Hi, I'm Anup Jain from Mindfire Solutions. In this video under Symphony series, I'll be covering how to create entity classes with database mapping information and some of the basic Symphony console commands related to doctrine. Usually we'll have database configuration specified in parameters.yml file, which usually resides inside app config folder. And it will have some of the database related configurations like driver, host, port, name, user, and password for which I have already specified some of the values. Once this configuration is done, we can actually create the database by running the console command doctrine database create. Now let's create the database using this command. Now this command when it is run actually makes use of default values for care set and collation. So if we need to have any values other than the default values, then those should be specified in the MySQL configuration file. Now, once the command is run, it's created a database called demo symphony as specified in the parameters.yml file. And let's see if the database has been created here. Yes, it has created the database demo symphony. Now let's see how to create entity classes and map them with the database. Typically entity classes reside inside the entity folder of the bundle. So I have created the folder entity inside the demo bundle and have created two entity classes task and user now let's see the user class for any entity class uh, that is to be mapped with the database we need to specify the metadata or the configuration uh, how to map the entity with the database now this can be done in either annotations yml or xml format in this example i'll be making use of the annotations format now the first annotation at orm entity specifies the doctrine that this class needs to be mapped with the database table and the next annotation um, at orm table name equal to user says that the table name is going to be user if this is not specified by default the name of the entity class will be taken i'll cover this annotation later Class properties will be mapped as table columns as per the database, as per the, sorry, as per the metadata specified. Uh, for example, this property uh, ID here is being uh, marked as at ORM ID indicating this is going to be the primary key in the table and at ORM column name equal to ID indicating this column name is going to be ID. If this is not given again by default the name of the property will be taken and this is going to be of type integer and the values are going to be auto generated one something which we use for primary keys and the next property name is of type string with the length 30 and DOB property which is used for date of birth purpose is of type date and you can see null label is set as true by default uh, the null label is false so if you want to specifically say for any property uh, allowing null label as true we can do this way and uh, uh, property roles is having doctrine data type array uh, which will be type text in MySQL which stores the array uh, in serialized format and savings property is of type decimal and we can also specify the scale and precision in this format and I'll cover tasks again later. Uh, now the doctrine also provides us something called as has life cycle callbacks like pre-persist, post-persist, pre-update, post-update uh, <coughs> using which uh, for example in, in this current case this method before persist has been marked as at ORM pre persist uh, so this method will be called before uh, saving an entity uh, because of which we will be able to set the current date time to the property created date time and to make use of this pre persist or post persist we just need to specify doctrine that this entity class has lifecycle callbacks with this annotation at the class level now let us look into the task entity again the task and already explained the annotations like at orm entity and at orm has lifecycle callbacks because of pre persist over here and for this table uh, the id is going to be the primary key 
because of the annotation at ORM ID and is of data type integer and it will have auto incremented values because of annotation at ORM generated value strategy auto and the property name is of type string with the length 10 and the description of type text and create a date time of type date time. Now to relate the user and the task entities we need to have user property in the task. Since a user can be associated with many tasks we should specify many to one association on task. We need to specify the target entity and in this case it will be user. Uh, by this we will have user id in the task table. With this we can get user for the task. In order to get all the tasks of a user it's easy for us to have task property in the user entity uh, as I, which was not explained earlier uh, and this will make it a bi-directional association using mapped by and uh, as you can see here inversed by. Now we have entity classes with properties that is like two entity classes user and task. So let's generate getters and setters for which we can make use of a command called docking generate entities. Now let's generate the getters and setters for user entity. Now if we go to user entity, we can see that the command has generated the getters and setters in the user entity. Now the same command if it is run without specifying any entity, it will create the getters and setters for all the entities under the given um, namespace that is inside ECMA demo bundle. Now running this command would have created, uh, will create the getters and setters for user and task as these are the two entities which are present under this namespace and see we can also see now the getters and setters being generated inside the task entity as well. Now to create database uh, tables uh, from the entities making use of the mapping information, we can make use of a console command doctrine schema create. So, okay, now we have run the command and it has created the database schema. Let's check in the database. task and user tables are created and we can see by making use of the mapping information we have uh, also uh, <coughs> created the columns id user id name description and create date time in a task table and in the user table you can see uh, the id name dob role savings and created date time columns now if we are going to have any modification in the entities then the same thing needs to be updated in the database as well. Now let's see how to do this. For example, now I am going to add an additional property in the entity task. I have added an additional property called is completed of type boolean. Now the same thing needs to be updated in the database for which make we make use of a command called doctrine schema update. So we run it as app, app console doctrine schema update hyphen hyphen force. Database schema has been updated successfully one queries were executed. This is what we see now going to database and selecting the task table and we see is completed has been added. So far uh, in this example we, we were making use of two entities called task and user and as uh, shown here these were ma created manually. Now to generate the entity itself we can make use of a command that is app console doctrine generate entity and the first thing that will be asked is like the entity shortcut name and uh, the example uh, how we give is going to be the namespace and the entity name so let me give it as acme demo bundle
formal entity name as test and the configuration format as again told uh, we can go for YML, XML, PHP or annotation I go for the, uh, uh, the default one that is annotation now the available types are going to be uh, array uh, a simple array types one thing to be noted is that the primary can be added automatically named as ID and the next new field name can be added let me add a property as name of field type string I'll go with the string and the field length I'm going to use as 50 and the next field name again whatever we need I'm gonna add a description and I'll make it text and once we are done we just enter do we want to generate entity repository class if we need it we can go for it by default it's no and so the final confirmation will be uh, for generating the entity test in the namespace at my demo bundle and this is successfully created let's see yeah the test entity with the property name and description that was given has been generated with the getters and setters now if we have to remove the database tables then we can make use of a command called doctrine schema drop hyphen hyphen first it will drop the database schema the database demo symphony is present but the schema that all the tables are dropped and in case if we have to drop the database itself then we can make use of a command called doctrine database drop and this drop the database connection called demo symphony yes so i hope this video is going to be very useful thank you